it is literally like reaction inception. It's like me reacting to him, reacting to me, reacting to clips and not the full, like not the full thing. <laughs> so guys, bear with me here. All right. This is a clip from a live stream um, was live and somebody in the chat like sent over a video from YouTube and they're like, hey, this guy that we've never heard of is talking about you from like a stream from like two months. I think it was like two months ago. The stream was out. And uh, I did a stream. It was with uh, actual fandom, Dane, Bob from Organized Chaos, Will, who I don't, I hate to say, it, I don't know a lot about Will. Um, I've done some streams with him on the show, but I don't really, we don't like, we don't, we don't really chat on social media. So I don't know a lot about Will. But anyway, I was there and I was responding to things that were in the chat. I was responding to questions being asked of me and giving my general opinion as I do on the internet. That's what we do, right? Anyway, this guy's reacting to clips on Twitter. Apparently someone clipped stuff out of the, the stream. I don't know like how much is out of context or whatever. I like to talk shit anyway. So, you know, as long as it's not misrepresenting me, um, even if it's out of context, I don't care. But if it's misrepresenting me to a point where I feel like I need to address it, I will. Anyway, let's let's watch this guy's um, reaction to me. I might have to skip through. This is a long video, so let's see Hello, what it says Avery here. Now, zero. Today we're going to be talking more about actual fandom, organized chaos, and a bunch of other people that they associate with. And they're calling themselves the Fandom Initiative. You know, coming after people like Jeremy from The Quartering, Jeremy Griggs, Nervrotic, I'm assuming... Eric July, these are the same people that, that have been talking noise about Eric July's comic for a while now. Actually, I have not. Um, me personally, like, I've not really talked much about Eric July's comic. I think I've made maybe two or three comments on it mostly. Um, but as far as going after them, it's because they are going after our communities. Uh, as a queer person, as a gay person in that community, having to constantly see bullshit misinformation videos constantly come out from these channels uh, targeting and harassing my entire community. I am retaliating to that. I'm not going after them. I am retaliating to that. So that's a misrepresentation um, that I feel like I need to clear up. And now they're just coming out after other people. We got some more clips here from the Ripperverse Goalpost Twitter account, which is a fantastic Twitter account. Go follow them if you don't. I really appreciate it if you do that. You put a lot of great content exposing these weirdos all the time. Again, okay, so right away, number one, um, Eric July Minion. He is 100% an Eric July Minion. The, the term weirdos is a word that Eric July repeats over and over and over again is a coded word or a placeholder for what he really wants to say. He wants to use slurs. But instead of using slurs against marginalized groups, he uses the word weirdos. Uh, it's a way to get away with it. This guy knows that. All the people that use it know that. Uh, I am a loud and proud weirdo. I've been a weirdo since I was a young kid. Being weird, there's nothing wrong with being weird. Being weird is also being creative. Uh, so using the term weirdos as a um, pejorative here uh, to say something negative about someone is a coded word. Uh, it's dog whistling to the audience. So right away, I know that this guy is going to be regurgitating Eric July uh, stuff. Start right here with this clip where this guy here. Me. Is talking about how, you know, people like the people I just mentioned, like Jeremy from the quarter, Jeremy and from Geeks and Gamers, etc. They hate everything and they do this for the money. Yeah. But they it's exceedingly rare. Yeah. I, I hate to say a lost cause because I don't want to think anybody is, but I feel like some of them are so deep in the like. The okay, so right there, the, the the thing I want to talk about there is prior to this, during the chat, I believe you were talking about like like the ways to sort of allow people to break out of that cycle. And my word there is, I don't want to say there are lost causes. I believe that people that are following this kind of content, this hateful content, are people that could be redeemed there are some people in there and i have said in the past that i didn't think it was possible but i have seen now there is a possibility that some of the people involved in these anti-fandoms anti can be sort of i don't want to say redeem like like some virtuous thing but they can come back from that and um that was a i thought a nice comment to say uh in terms of like what we had been talking about these guys that do this i mean the plan is there they want to these guys that do this they love the things that they love they love 
fandom. They love the movies they used to watch, and they love the characters they used to watch, and the franchises they used to love, and it's all destroyed, and they're here calling out. But it's not destroyed. That is that is a complete misrepresentation. Something destroyed means it does not exist anymore, right? Destroying something means it is gone, it no longer exists. All of the stuff that I guess you like, I'm assuming because you're following these channels, all the stuff that you like and these other channels like, it is still there. You can still go back and watch it. You can put it in your your VHS if you're still using VHS. You can put it in your Blu-ray, your DVD player, whatever, stream it. These things still exist. No one has taken anything away from anybody. Those things are still there. They're not banned. They're not gone. They still exist. To say that they have destroyed something means that the new content that's being made is something you don't like and therefore you want it destroyed you don't want it to exist you're literally advocating all these channels are advocating for these things to not be made or not exist and therefore you are the ones asking for something to be destroyed it's not the other way around i'm not retroactively and i don't think anybody that i've ever spoken to are retroactively asking for any of that older content to be taken away to, to be burned up to be destroyed none of us are saying that um, so to say that that is what is happening is it is the hyperbole that is the foundation of the outrage content that they make. And it is a huge misrepresentation. And if you take two seconds to think about it, you'll realize that all you have to do to watch your favorite thing is go watch it. That's it. The BS and calling out the nonsense and the trash that is things. Like but all of that is subjective, man. All of that is subjective. Calling something BS and trash is a subjective opinion about something you don't like. You don't get to dictate whether or not those things can exist because you don't like them. The same way I'm not out here advocating for people not to be able to, like Eric July and all these guys, they can have their channels, but I'm allowed to speak on these channels, right? I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. These channels are saying that this content should not exist. Therein lies the hypocrisy of it. They are advocating taking away access to this content. Whereas I'm saying people just need to be aware of what they're getting into when they're watching an, an Eric July video or a Geeks and Gamers video or a Nerdrotic video. Be aware of what you're watching. Understand what it is. I'm not saying it has to go away. It's like Disney Star Wars and Disney Marvel and all the other garbage that they're releasing. with Subjective. Marvel, destroying... They're not destroying anything. Empowering male characters and uplifting the female characters and making the female and degrading the male characters and the, the female characters talking down to the male characters and seeing things like that. Again, this is, this is all being fed to this person. No offense to him, but he's regurgitating what they're saying. He's regurgitating it. Where is, where is your original, what is your opinion here? What is your opinion on this? That is not completely word for word, their opinion. What is your opinion on this? Because my opinion is they're not treating all male characters like that. They're not doing that. There are there are times where male characters who are portrayed as bad characters are going to be shown in a bad light. That is the nature of storytelling. And in those stories, there may be female characters or diverse characters that are portrayed as better than or good because that is the story they're telling. But there's no shortage of male protag protagonistical content where the male characters are also seen as good and other people are seen as bad. You may not know this, but for a very long time in media, like the villains were always people who were not white men, primarily English speaking white men. It was a very common thing when you went to a movie or you watch a TV show, they were the savior character. And now the industry is saying, hey, we want to change it up a little bit and let everybody have an opportunity to be the the good guy or the good person in the movie. And the fact that people are freaking out over that says a lot. It says a lot, dude. Like, it does. Do this long enough to make a bunch of money and then walk away without any accountability for the things they've done. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. really this. All they've ever done is give their opinion. What accountability are you? referring to i'm referring to the fact that what you're doing right now is proof of what i was saying these guys create these cults that follow them that literally worship the ground they walk on to the point where they will make videos like the one you're making now defending their honor and getting nothing in return that's it you want to shout out from them are you trying to like you know buddy buddy with them what is what is the end goal here you're not giving me any of your thoughts or opinions yet. 
We're two minutes into your video and you've just regurgitated stuff that they've said. You are proof that they are not being held accountable for the hatred that they allow to happen once they say it. If you get on and your opinion is oppression, 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 women bad, women bad, women bad, minority, minority, minority bad, if that is your opinion and then your opinion seeps out to people and you start treating it like it's a community of people who are oppressing other people, then congratulations, now you are starting a cult of personality and you're gonna have cult followers. People that follow you and defend you even when you're doing awful shit even when they probably know it's not good. And a lot of times people say, oh, well, I'm not homophobic or I'm not racist. And the reason why is they know those things are bad. They know that those things are bad and they don't want to be associated with it, even though they are doing those things. They are being homophobic. They're being racist. They're being bigoted. They're being misogynistic. They know that those things are bad. So they try to disassociate themselves from them. That is what I'm saying. These folks don't care about you. They don't care about you. You are a customer for them. You're a consumer for them. And here you are getting on camera, regurgitating their talking points and doing exactly what they expect you to do, what they expect their fans to do. Run the front lines for them. That's it. And as far as making money, that is exactly what they're doing, my dude. People on YouTube that are at the level that some of these channels are at make tons of money off of the content they make. Therein lies the question, are they being genuine or are they not? I'm going to lean into the fact that I don't think they are because a lot of times they get mad about stuff that I don't believe they're mad about. I.e. right now, the Little Mermaid shit. The, the, the stuff with Little Mermaid. I don't believe they're mad about that. The, the, the April O'Neil shit. I don't believe they're mad about that. These are things that I don't think they're upset about because they're calling it out specifically for the same reasons they have called out other stuff, but ignoring other issues in the industry. There are legitimately things that you could talk about in terms of content that are bad where you could say, I don't like that. And a lot of people don't like that. And that, and that's fine. But if you immediately go to, it's a woman, it's black, it's a race swap. That brings into question why you're doing it. Newsflash. It's not because it's bad because you haven't seen anything yet. Sad reality of it. Because think about this, like people like the quartering, um, there's a bit of ego in what he does. I mean, he definitely, I would say the only ego the quartering really has is the fact that he's a workaholic and likes to make money. Oh. Oh. So I I thought they were just sharing their opinion. Didn't didn't you just say that all they've ever wanted to do was share their opinion and then you say that the quartering is a workaholic and wants to make money. I'm going to say there's probably conflicting statements on your part there but let's go let's move on like i said i use the term bigotry porn because i feel like that's what it all is but it's not bigotry porn. it is giving commentary on trash no it's not okay trash is subjective and you can't give commentary on stuff that you're not watching the majority of these channels don't watch the content you know what commentary is commentary is talking about what you have seen you're talking about it they're talking about headlines. They're talking about clickbait articles. The majority of the content that they talk about, they have not seen. Case in point, Little Mermaid and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Probably a bunch of the combo properties. They didn't really watch She-Hulk. Most of them didn't watch She-Hulk. So you can't give commentary on something you have not seen. You cannot. On trash shows, trash movies. You don't know if they are. You've never watched them. And people like, you know, Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian who do terrible things and ruin, ruin games like Anita Sarkeesian does. I don't know enough about them to comment and on Zoe that. Zoe Quinn scamming people out of money. But, you know, we're not going to... Oh, that's fun. Scamming people out of money. I'm not even going to jump down that rabbit hole. That would be another 30 minutes. But scamming is an interesting... Like, I don't know that person, but I do know that a lot of people in the fandom menace community, adjacent community, um have you guys completely brainwashed in, in getting money from you talk about the, the things that he calls out we're gonna talk about how he's a bigot there's a bit of ego with that i i stand by bigotry porn i believe that i believe that these guys have to have a fix right they get online and they follow these channels and they follow this content because there is an emotional and chemical reaction they get from this content that they enjoy 
they enjoy hearing about women being oppressed. They enjoy hearing about minorities being oppressed. These things engage them and therefore they watch it and they get excited from it. Hence the term uh, bigotry porn. There, There is a argument for that. At, um, I don't know if he'd want to walk away, but then you have a lot of people that I feel like are doing it just enough to make a big sum of money and then walk away because we- Isn't that the same thing you're doing? You're talking about them. No, because I don't make money on that channel. I don't make, I don't, I go on that channel, absolutely make nothing from it. And on my main channel, I don't talk about it. So I have no incentive to make money from these, from any of them. I am doing this, even when I talk about it on Twitter, I am making nothing from it. Because people that come to my main channel don't come to it for this kind of content. I created a second channel, non-monetized, specifically so I could talk about this stuff. You may not believe this, but I genuinely do care, and I have a very specific reason why. And I talked about it earlier in this video, and I've talked about it in a lot of videos on this channel, okay? I am a 40-something-year-old gay man who has lived through oppression. I've lived through death in my community. I lived in the 80s and 90s when I watched people that I cared about die due to disinformation, misinformation, people not having empathy for them, government not having their back. I've seen this happen. I've seen people in my life get arrested for wear, for dressing in drag. I've seen countless things. And we have fought really, really hard to be able to just live our lives and get the most out of our lives in this country. So watching these channels who have no... There's, there's, they don't have a dog in the fight. They don't stand to lose anything in reality for diversity being in, in media. They stand to lose nothing from it. If a gay man is in a movie or a gay man isn't in a movie, then all they get to do is either talk about it or not talk about it. They literally suffer no repercussions for that. But when they're putting out content that is strictly made to talk about how diversity and representation is bad, that translates down the line into real life things. People having like real life issues with it. Like right now you're making this video. I don't know if you would have made this video ever in your life had you not been part of these channels, like in terms of watching them and stuff like that. So now you're getting on here and you're talking about a gay man and whether or not he should be able to say these things about a bunch of cis hetero men, straight men, who are talking down about gay people. This should not be the conversation we're having in 2023. It doesn't make sense. A lot of this we left in the 90s and the early 2000s. And myself, along with a bunch of people, refused to be silent and refused to get things rewound back to the time where we were oppressed. I can guarantee you that a lot of this stuff, and we're seeing it now with these anti-trans, anti-drag, anti-gay rhetoric coming out in this country, that this stuff, these political channels, because keep in mind, they are political channels. These political channels wrapped up in fandoms are causing a problem. And I'm not singling out who's following them. You could be white, you could be black, you could be anybody. You could, you could be wrapped up in this one way or the other. The only way to get people to go, maybe, just maybe they're doing something wrong, maybe I should not feel this way about other people, is to speak out about it. I don't make any money from this. I am doing this completely with no, no nothing to be made from it. So to answer your question or your statement, respond to your statement, no, I'm not making money from this. But go on talking about something else to make money right no are you not doing the same thing do you not see the irony in there's the no place? irony because i'm not making money from this you don't really know these people they don't talk you don't and yet here you are talking crap about them it's it's easy for you to clip that portion and then respond to that take that whole segment into context there the whole segment okay you don't know these people. When I say that, I'm suggesting that in my opinion, they are shady people. What they present to us, what we see is what I'm commenting on, right? Follow me on this one. 
they are presenting to me bigotry, racism, misogyny, all of the above. Transphobia, homophobia, they're, they're show, showing me all of that, right? So from my opinion on their public persona, they seem to me like they are pushing this, this story, this narrative to make money from it. That is my opinion. When I say we don't really know these people, what I mean by that is we are not sure if they are being genuine or not, which makes them shady people. That is what I meant there. But, you know, sure. Talk about real life. Everything with them is just a, it's a facade. Mm -hmm. Really, what I just said. How is it a facade if they're bringing in facts and evidence of things? They're not bringing in facts. That's the thing. Using Bounty Gun Comics or any of these other, um, these other websites that make up fake stories, they're, they're not facts. They misconstrue stuff. Matter of fact, recently Nerdrotic was posting out stuff about Disney uh, having issues with their content because they lost a bunch of money on Disney Plus, when in fact it was because they lost cricket rights in Southeast Asia. That is the that is news that is out there for the world. But he never addresses that. He continues to push the narrative that that is the reason why. We have content creators like Eric July uh, interjecting in conversations, in queer conversations uh, about trans people and drag queens, et cetera, et cetera, and then coming on and talking about it like he understands it when he knows nothing about it at all. So he's talking about things from the queer community when he has no perspective on that. So they're not speaking facts. That is false. You're lying now. You're absolutely lying. The facade is we don't know if they're actually shady or not. But the assumption I have, based on everything we have seen publicly, is that they are. That is what the facade is. It's that they're talking about. They're giving you the written or spoken evidence. There's no evidence. Who the claims that they make. Nope. So make yep. the money and walk away. Here's the thing. If you want to say they're giving their opinion, which is something you said earlier, then the facts don't matter. Right? Right? I mean, you're saying that they're providing us with facts and evidence. Well, what good are fact, facts and evidence when somebody's giving their opinion? Which is it? Is it commentary based on opinion or are they delivering facts? Wh which one of those things are happening? Because I'm not sure that you even know at this point, to be quite honest. And, and who cares? Which, which I can't be surprised uh, based on the channels that you're supporting here. I leave the town on fire and that's kind of the way it is and so it's, it's an unfortunate reality because i'd like to i would actually like to get inside the head of these people to see what they really think like if they really you don't need to get inside the heads of nobody you weirdo what they there we go okay so there again weirdo weirdo is a coded word for a slur pretty sure what was in his head when he said that, that little pause before weirdo um no i don't need to get inside of anybody's head you're absolutely right i don't need to get inside of somebody's head however i would like to because i would like to know if the content they're making if they are genuinely racist bigoted misogynist content creators or if they're doing it for the money because i i would like to believe that maybe maybe they are just doing it for the money maybe that's why they're telling it to you on video what they think that's the whole point of their content. <laughs> they are That's sad. Anti everything. Oh. If you knew anything about the quartering, because I used to watch, I've been watching the quartering since he was at two hundred thousand subs. That's a problem. That's the problem. That in itself is the problem. A lot of people that watch this content or have been watching it for a long time have this like thing where they don't want to see any faults in these content creators. They believe that everyone is, a, that all of these people are above reproach. They can't make mistakes, right? I am the first one to tell everyone I am not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. And when I do, I learn from those mistakes. I listen to what people are telling me and I change those things to make myself a better person. If you go through life like one of these people that you follow and you believe that you are the 100% source of like your opinion is so good. It's basically fact. And then you have people that follow you that way. That is dangerous behavior. It's, it's unhealthy. It is unhealthy for you or anyone else to look at anyone creating content, myself, anyone, and think that we are above reproach. There's no criticism that can be taken in, into account, that there's no faults whatsoever. That is cultish behavior. Do you understand that? 
That is cultish behavior if you cannot admit that someone that you follow can make a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does. There's an issue with that. It's unhealthy. It is unhealthy behavior. The Quartering loves things like Crane Game. Great. His favorite franchise is Ghostbusters. Awesome. He talks about it all the time. No, he doesn't. You know how I know that? Because if that were the case, that's what we would all know them for. So you mean to tell me that, that the stuff they love is so prevalent that the only thing that escapes their channels and gets out into the world is the negative stuff? That somehow, some way, the only thing that we see as non-followers of these channels is negative stuff. I don't even have to go and look. I can guarantee if you pause my video right now and you go to Quarterings page, look at the last week, and I can guarantee you the majority of the content on that channel is hate content. I, I beg of you to find a video within the last seven days that doesn't have some sort of angle to it that isn't some sort of narrative or anti-thought process that comes from his channel. I beg you to do it because you're not going to find it. You're not going to find it on his channel. That's disingenuous. He loves retro video games. He loves World of Warcraft. Wow. I mean, like, like I don't know, over 80, 70, 80% of the people in that age demographic, very unique hobbies. It's the bullshit that goes around all of those things. But it does. The bullshit that they create. They create that that bullshit. They don't hate it. They They profit from it. Don't you see? I mean, I feel like I'm speaking to a wall sometimes here. They are creating that hostile environment. The people that love the stuff, that love all of the stuff that goes around, whether you love like this game, that game, whatever, they're not out there advocating and creating content to be angry about stuff. That is the people you follow. That is the people you look up to. Show me someone that has made content that is hateful and negative, targeting specifically the demographic that you guys are complaining about, targeting specifically that demographic, and tell and show me where people are on this like crusade to end nostalgia. Who's out there advocating for people not to be able to love retro video games? Who's out there advocating for people not to love World of Warcraft? There's trolls. But who really is out there advocating for that stuff? And then I'm going to flip that around and say, who's advocating for non-diversity so that people can't see themselves represented in content? Who is advocating for that? Who is telling media corporations that they don't want to see women in positions of power because it makes men feel bad? That is some emotional level shit that doesn't exist and that you guys have weaponized. You guys have weaponized it. And now you've created this narrative. Quartering or actually you watched his videos, you would know these things. Oh, if you if you watched the cult, if you're in my cult, then you would understand. If you would drink the Kool-Aid, then you would understand. If you if you spend all day long wrapped up in the fandom menace and the hate channels, then you would understand. No. You don't have to do that. You know why? Because the only thing that matters is taking responsibility for the content of theirs that gets out to the world. And they know that. They know that. That's why they make the content they make. You've already admitted that earlier. You already admitted, admitted that, that he, that he, he's a hard work. He overworks and he does it for money. You've already admitted that. So you've already admitted that. So your defense of all of this other stuff is bullshit. You want to talk about bullshit? Bullshit is you pretending like the stuff that he loves gets out to the world instead of just accepting that the stuff that he puts out, the anti-content that he puts out is what everyone knows him for. And he knows that too. But clearly you don't watch him, so you don't know these things. And you don't watch me. You don't watch me. My dude, do you know what I love? Do you know the things that I love? Do you know anything about me? You didn't even know my name. At the beginning of this video, you said, and this dude, you don't even know my name. So here you are telling me 
that I shouldn't be saying these things about these people because I don't know them. Yet you've made a, what, 24 minute video, which I'm assuming that most of these clips or the majority of these clips are gonna be me. You made a 24 minute video about clips with me in it and you don't even know my name. So I'm coming to your channel and giving you that same energy. So all I know about you is the fact that you seem to basically worship these channels and you are regurgitating the shit that they're regurgitating. So I'm gonna extend the same courtesy to you that you have to me and not know a fucking thing about you other than what you're showing me. So if that's the game we're playing, let's play. Let's play that game. Let's play it. Or if it's something like I can make money doing this, so I'm gonna... The only thing he hates is the forced things like diversity and inclusion and everything. The only... Th everything. <laughs> the only thing he hates is forced diversity and inclusion. Everything. So he hates everything. My guy, like, you should probably think about these things before you say them. There's no such thing as forced diversity or inclusion because that would be insinuating that gay people and marginalized people are being inserted into places that they're not supposed to be. That's what it means, right? So by saying that, you're saying that this is straight content and they're forcing diversity into straight content. Straight people do not own entertainment. They never have. A lot of the creative space is filled up with lots of diverse people. But the world has been catering to white men for a very long time, straight white men, and men in general as time has gone on. So the diversity has been cut back in order to make money. Hollywood is just as responsible for this shit as everybody else did. And now they're realizing that that market is drying up for them. That as Gen Z grows up, as, as the millennials grow up, they want to see a more diverse roster of people, which I think is fantastic. So by using the word forced diversity or forced in, uh, inclusion, you are suggesting that marginalized people do not, they should not be in this content. That is bigotry, it is homophobia, it's racist energy, it's misogynistic energy, it is all of those above. And I'm just gonna call it what it is. Which we don't need. The oh. only diversity we need is diversity of thought. Do it. R right, 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 diversity of thought. So you're basically saying I'm a bigot. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but you're saying the only diversity we need is diversity of thought. Well, what does that mean exactly? What does di- I'm going to put this on you if you ever fucking see this video. What the fuck is diversity of thought if it's not showing other people in the right stuff that you're writing and making? Yes, that's just- so that's just talking shit. I can appreciate a shit talker, but don't try to come up with some intellectual bullshit. Like a car salesman. Okay, so that was the first video. We're going to actually move on to the next video here of them talking once again. You know, here I'm going to skip anything that isn't me like because I'm not going to speak for anybody else. That than this kind of thing, but at some point, it just becomes all the same. You know, like I, I don't. I think some of them don't even probably re acknowledge or understand that there's a difference between. You know, they. I don't know. Who you're? I'm the same way. I think. Sounds like a bunch of dribbles. So <laughs> about it, you know, it's probably a fucking bag of rabid cats in their brains. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me sad because. These people are a lot smarter than you are. The people that you're complaining about are a lot smarter than you are because they're better at monetizing idiocy and retardation. Okay, so the R slur, wow, wow. R slur just out and about, right? Tells me that you are definitely uh, zoning in on those channels. Being able to monetize something doesn't make someone smarter. There are plenty of examples of shit that can be monetized that is not good, right? You know what one of the biggest de problems in this country is junk food. Junk food is highly monetizable, yet it is garbage for a person to have. I love junk food as much as the next person, but it's not good for you. Smoking is highly monetizable, but it's not good for you. And the people that are making it are not smart for peddling this shit to people who are out there addicted to it. So your entire argument there about these people are a lot smarter than you because they can monetize better than you is just dumb. And that also, once again, I have to give you credit, you have admitted that they are doing it for the money. Again, you have admitted they're doing it for the money. 
growing up, because I mean, all of us are, at least, I think all of us are over 40, or at least 40 ish in that territory. Uh, and yet, here you are being 40 or, or over, complaining about other people's success. Uh, no. No, no, I'm not complaining about other people's success. Where did I ever say that I was complaining about their success? I'm complaining that they are spreading bigoted messages. They are spreading propaganda and lies and opinions that are literally just propagating problems for marginalized communities. I don't give a fuck if they're successful. There's a lot of shit people who are successful. And me being of an age where I can recognize that is something I'm really proud of. By the way, uh, quartering, look at uh, Nerd Roddick. These are all older people. These are all older guys. So I don't even know what kind of argument you're making there, to be completely honest. Um, growing up... Rather than creating your own success. I, I have a channel that I'm very proud of that has almost 24,000 subscribers on it. A really good community with nice people. It is a hobby for me. My success, which you know nothing about, exists outside of the internet. I don't even need to explain it to you, but I have a very successful life outside of the fucking internet. I know that's hard to believe because clearly you spend a lot of time. I mean, you have to, because these guys do like 20 hours worth of content a day, hundred hours of content a day. They make so much content for you to consume that you probably don't get a lot of time out in the real world. Because if you did, you would understand that the internet is not a measure of your success. It is a tool for you to use to propagate your success, not a measure of your success. A measure of your success is whatever you do in your life. And again, you, you don't know shit about me, man. I would have loved to be a part of the quote unquote cool kids because I was a comic book reader. And back then it was like, you got talked about like garbage all the time, right? Now that I would agree with. Mm -hmm. So to have a situation- It's probably the only thing I've ever agreed with with these people. Wow, so I'm honored. So you agreed with me on something. Well, kudos to you. Kudos to you because I've given you a couple of shots here as well where you've admitted that they're doing it for the money more than one time. And I agree with you on that. So look, we're making we're making a little bit of lead weight. We're 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 coming together here. We're we're making the world a better place, right? Now where it's flipped around where those same bullies that bullied me and other comic book fans for being fans of these things as kids are now part of this cycle and they're using yes the thing is that's called the mcu brought in the normies that right there you you just bullied someone you literally did it right there by calling fans of something and, and giving this gatekeeping energy, you just bullied them. You literally, pr you proved it. The condescending tone, calling them normies in a negative light, like, that is bullying, my dude. Like, you just proved it. The MCU brought in the normies who don't know shit about comic books. It doesn't matter. They don't have to. It's like the reason why the MCU makes as much money as it does is because it caters to everyone. Um, it would not be successful. Look at a lot of the other franchises that tried to just cater to niche audiences. They don't make enough money. But they think they know about the characters that they talk about because they watch the movie or they use a. Mar so wait, they watched a movie. So they care about the character in the movie. Movies that the guys you talk about never watch. That they don't watch them or support them. Because if they did, they would be catering to that, right? If they go out and they watch that content, they're contributing to the success of that content. So clearly they can't. So are there movies that you have watched, TV shows that you've watched for books that you didn't read? Are you a fan of a TV show that was based on a book? I guarantee you that you are. At what point do you do you, do you get the card of card carrying uh, right to be a real fan? You have to read one book from the series. You have to read all of it. You have to go all the way back and read everything from beginning to end. How many people do you know have read every single Superman story ever in existence? 
How many people do you know have read every single Spider-Man story ever in existence, consumed every single bit of Spider-Man information? This idea that someone is a quote unquote normie because they just got introduced to the MCU is just dumb shit, man. It's a dumb shit because the thing about it is if someone gets introduced to, um, you know, Miles Morales Spider-Man as the first Spider-Man that they meet and they're excited about seeing that Spider-Man, they are not required to read everything else. To, to be a fan of Spider-Man. They can just be a fan of that one version of Spider-Man. Just like somebody can be a fan of a version of a character in the MCU. They don't need to be an encyclopedia of comic book knowledge to be a fan of this content. I don't know why that's so difficult to understand, but you guys seem to use that as a talking point all the time. And it's not the flex that you think it is. Because if you got grilled on comic book, like somebody that really fucking knows comic books came up to you and said, who are you a fan of? And you tell them and they ask you a question about it that you can't answer. All of a sudden you're not a fan because you don't know the answer to one of their questions on this panel of this comic or whatever, what were they holding in their hand? And then you go, Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Are you not a fan at that point? Wh what is the line? How many comics do they have to read? How long should they have been reading comics before they're considered a true fan? Because I've been reading comics ever since the seventies. When I was really little, I was reading comics. I remember reading comics at like four and five years old. Maybe not understanding them, but opening them up and looking at them and saying some of the words in them. So does that make me, am I not a true fan because I haven't been reading them since the 50s? Or am I good because I've been reading it since the 70s? What is the metric for that? It's a number that you can't even define and that none of these channels can define. So enough of this bullshit about you have to read the comics to understand the characters. They're adaptations. They don't have to be like the fucking comics. Marvel Unlimited app and think they own shit. Love to now turn that around and bully other people. Yep. And Considering that Eric has clearly shown to a detractor of his that he's been a Marvel fan, comic book fan for a while now since probably his teenage years. What is he really doing? Well, I'm assuming Eric is younger than me. So by your definition, I am a truer comic book fan than Eric, right? If, you're, if your metric for being a true comic fan is how long someone's been reading comics, which I don't give a fuck how long somebody's been reading comics, somebody could have started reading three years ago and they know more than I know. They know more than you know. But that seems to be your metric. So since Eric has been reading comics since he was a teenager, probably in the 90s, I'm going to guess, I have about a decade or more worth of comic book reading than him. So that would make me a truer fan of comics than him, correct? So why does why is my opinion not more valid? Why is my opinion not better than his? If, if the only criteria is how long someone has read comics. I'm just curious. And what does that have to do with somebody bullying? That doesn't have anything to do with with being bullied or being or, or being a bully. It has nothing to do with that. So I don't I don't really totally understand what that's even why that was even important to bring up. But whatever. And yeah, it's, it's such a up. weird thing because it's because because the only thing I see Eric doing is giving his commentary on based on something he li used to like, used mm. to enjoy doing, like reading Marvel comics, reading DC comics. Used to like. That's not what he's doing. My guy, let me once again explain this to you so you understand. He is talking about modern comic books that he has not read. Romanticizing about comics that came out two decades ago. If he were giving his opinion on comics that came out two decades ago, he wouldn't be conflating them to modern comics and acting like modern comics has somehow destroyed something that he still has. Those stories and characters and comics still exist. As people get older and content gets marketed for younger people, they tend to change. That's why fashion, at some point in your life as an adult, you start to lose sense of what fashion and modern music is because those things don't get catered to you anymore. These guys are older guys like me sitting around getting mad that the world no longer caters to them. And it doesn't have to. My guy, it doesn't have to do that. They are catering to a younger audience. You have to cater to a certain... Dem Why do you think the demographics 
for things exist. Why do you think these companies look at the demos when they look at movies and TV shows and stuff like that? They're trying to catch that next big thing. As a society, we have to push forward to change and make things better for the next generation. This concept that we're supposed to hold on to things like tradition and, and all this other stuff, and when it comes to media like art and things like that, is stagnant as fuck. It's stagnant as fuck. And it doesn't make someone boring or a loser or any of these other negative words that are used about people who want to create content or evolve content. So he's not giving commentary on modern comics because he himself has admitted on more than one occasion that he doesn't read modern comics. So he reads headlines. He looks at pictures. He doesn't read the content he's talking about. Therefore, he is not giving commentary on that. It's really not that difficult to understand. And watching his hobby be destroyed by people who don't actually care. Once again, not destroyed and who cares and who doesn't care is subjective. Care about what they're writing. It's not being destroyed. It's like counter, it's, it's against everything that I thought we were as a community. To just yeah. come in and be like, they can't do this, they can't do that. Like their fantasy and their idea of escapism is a world where no diversity exists. Wrong. If you knew anything about someone like Aaron Jalal. Well, right, because you said the only diversity we need is diversity of thought. So everything coming out of your mouth now is either a lie or your original statement was a lie. Because you just told me earlier, I just said a world without diversity. You said a diversity of thought. You said a diversity, inclusion, bullshit, all that stuff. So anything you say now is either a lie, if it's you, if it's on you, or stuff that you said earlier is a lie. So I'm curious to hear what you're gonna say. Uh, you will know that one of his favorite characters is a black man called- Interesting, are we going to start naming off characters who aren't white or who aren't men to prove that someone is not against more diverse characters. Is that what we're going to do now? Cause I really hope we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. I hope that's not the path we're taking. Oh, Luke H. If you knew anything about Eric July, you would know that one of his favorite X-Men is Storm, mm. a black woman. You're naming characters that like a lot of people love. His love of that character is not ownership because those characters existed during the era when he was reading comics already. And therein lies the problem. Those characters already existed when he started reading comics. So we're talking about characters that are being introduced now in modern comics. So giving me examples of characters that he loved from like 25, 30 years ago, it's not, that doesn't matter, man. That's not what I'm even talking about. I'm talking about right now. Right here, right now. We're talking about trans characters, gay characters, lesbian characters, more female characters in lead positions, more characters of color across the board. We're not talking about characters that already existed and that he loved when he was younger. But you keep running the, the, the defense for him. Eric July's other favorite characters are Batman, he's not white, and The Flash because he was an athlete. Hold on. Eric July's other favorite characters are Batman, he's not white. Batman's not white? Well, you can't be talking about an Elseworlds Batman because Eric July has made it very clear he doesn't like the multiverse. He doesn't like alternate versions of characters. So which Batman are you talking about? Bruce Wayne is Fully white, my dude. And The Flash, because he was an athlete. If you knew anything about Eric July, you would know these things. I don't have to know those things. Those things do not matter right now. Who I loved 40 years ago does not give me the right to come out now and be like, these new characters don't have the right to exist. You do understand that, right? You're talking about characters that already existed when he was growing up, not new characters. I just said their idea of a world, i.e. the world we're in right now, is a world without diversity. That is their idea of a world 
right now. They made it very clear that they like classic characters. They don't want new characters. So why the fuck would I be talking about characters from the 90s? That doesn't make any sense, man. You would know these things. You would know that Eric July, for the longest time that I've been watching him, has had a poster of Black Panther okay. on his wall. Big deal. What people are arguing is that the diversity is forced. We've already established. If you are suggesting that diversity is forced, then you are saying that the people that are in these movies and TV shows and comic books are, are not supposed to be there. You do realize that's what you're saying, right? You're saying that they're being forced because they're not supposed to be there. That's bigoted, that's homophobic, that's transphobic, it's, it's racist. Like, I don't care who someone liked a long time ago. I, I'm not talking about that. It's not played out in the movie, it's part of the plot. Or it's part of, you know, thought process. What? 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 Oh. It's not played out in the movie as part of the plot thought process. What the actual fuck? I don't even know how to respond to that. It doesn't make any sense. That it feels forced. No. Like it's just in there just, just to check a box. There we go again with this, this language from these channels, man. You have been indoctrinated by these channels. I beg of you to get some free thought. Just think for yourself, my dude. Like... No one is checking, a lot of these characters they've complained about were, they, how can something be to check a box, but then they're like, oh, well, they're self-inserting themselves. I've heard Eric July say that. This is a person self-inserting themselves into a, a comic. How can it simultaneously be checking a box, but also representative of the people that are creating it? That doesn't make any sense. You have to understand this stuff is bullshit, man. Nobody's checking a box. Like nobody's doing that with characters that have storylines. Like if checking a box, if you're talking about performative stuff or tokenization of a character, I've covered this in another video. Tokenization is a character that is just there just to fill in a space that doesn't have any story that may have a few stereotypical speaking lines and could be killed off at any time and would not matter because they were not involved in anything in that story. They were just there to take up a space in that story. That is tokenization. And that is something that a lot of people in marginalized groups are trying to get away from. We want more than that. We want more representation. So if you truly believe that, then you should be fighting for more diversity, more inclusion, because then these characters would feel like characters that exist within the world. You would be fighting for that. You would be on the side of the progressive people who want to see better stories and more diverse characters. But if you're fighting against it, then you're totally okay with these characters and these people not even existing in these worlds. Because if I were to ask you, how would you do it? How would you include a more diverse group of characters? Your answer would be, as you said earlier, the diversity doesn't matter. It's about, what is it? Di thought of uh, diversity of thought or something like that because you don't have an answer. You don't know. You just don't want to see these people in this content. It's becoming more and more clear to me as I'm watching your video that that's the path we're going down. Similar to Miles Morales being Miles Morales. And Spider-Man. He's Miles Morales and he's Spider-Man. Just like Peter Parker is Peter Parker. But Peter Parker is also Spider-Man. And by saying that Miles isn't Spider-Man is fucking racist. Full stop. Put a period on the end of it. It is racist. If we go back prior to you being born and Eric July being born, there's a lot of characters who changed who they were under their mask. But nobody wants to talk about that because anytime it's brought up, there's always an argument about quality. It's not about quality. It's about racism. Miles Morales is a fucking good Spider-Man. He's a great character. And a lot of people were introduced to Spider-Man through that character. So by saying that he isn't Spider-Man is disingenuous as fuck. And it's racist as fuck. Well, and then they he... want to be in a world where everything is white cishet men. And everything else is, is, a, is a side character to that. Well, it's then really they, what annoying. they do is they, they... What they do is talk about tokenization like Eric July does. Uh, stop. You keep reference Like, literally, my my man, he doesn't give a fuck about you. you. You could walk around with his merch on. You might get a selfie with him. He doesn't care about you, man. So stop running the front lines for him. Eric July's definition of tokenization is not the actual definition. 
I don't give a fuck what he says or what he rejects or whatever. Tokenization in media is a very specific thing, right? It's a very specific thing. I've already explained what it is. His definition of tokenization is just a gay person or a, a woman being like in, in a space of another character. Like that's his idea of tokenization. I mean, every definition he's ever given, ever given, that's what it is. So I'm curious to hear what you're going to say here uh, what, in terms of what Eric July believes. As far as I'm aware, tokenization of a original white character named Peter Parker, who is... No, because Miles Morales is a character named Miles Morales. He's not Peter Parker, who is black. He's a separate character in a world where Peter Parker already existed. So how is that tokenization? Is Spider-Man, unlike Miles Morales, is Miles Morales. They've literally said that Miles Morales was created to check a box. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They did not say that. You use the word literally, and that is not literally what they said. You could be paraphrasing or you could be putting your own spin on it, but that is literally not what they said. Um, Alex Alonzo, who was editor-in-chief editor of Marvel at that time, did have some statements about his pleasure in seeing another person other than Peter being represented. Even Stan Lee was very excited about the fact that Spider-Man was going to be a person of color. Stan Lee, you know, Stan Lee, the person that actually created Peter Parker and Spider-Man, he approved of this. So I don't think we need to look to Eric July and go, we should listen to him, but ignore the actual creator of Spider-Man who approved of this Miles Morales Ultimates version of Spider-Man. The actual fucking creator approved, my dude, the creator approved of this. Like, you're gonna take Eric July's opinion over the actual creator who praised this and thought it was a great idea. And it wasn't even in the main universe. It was in the Ultimates universe. <sighs> Jeez. So that they can have a they can have a black Spider-Man, which he's half black. He's also Latino. But it's beside the point. They kind of it's it's not beside the point. Because this is the entire argument you're making. Right? I mean, it's not besides the point. Beside the point would mean that those things don't matter. But they do because that's the entire argument. You say they're checking a box. What if Miles would have been a white Spider-Man? Say, for example, in the Ultimate Universe, they would have introduced Miles as a new Spider-Man who wasn't someone of mixed background, who's just another white Spider-Man. This argument, this entire debate would not be happening, man. It wouldn't be happening. So it's not besides the point that he is some a person of color from a mixed background. Uh, just for the record, I skipped over videos that I didn't really say anything because I don't want to speak for anybody else. Uh, anybody else from the podcast that said what they had to say, I'd rather give them the opportunity to speak on it. I'm not going to like jump in, in their conversation and, and speak for them. So let's see. This next video here, I believe the next clip is something that I say, which I think a lot of people um, got upset about. I do remember seeing a lot of people on Twitter talking about this. So I can't wait to explain this one. Yeah, it's just how the system is set up and that's uh, <laughs> taking us down some, some it's bad- It's really weird road. how low effort that, that content is typically. It's like- If it's low effort, why aren't you doing it? Because I'm not a piece of shit because I'm not a garbage person. I'm not a racist. I'm not a bigot. I'm not a transphobe. I'm not a misogynist. Like that's why I don't, that's why I don't make four and five minute videos getting mad about the color of a mermaid skin. That's low effort energy, man. Like, and people talk about all the time. They're like, well, what do you consider high effort energy? Actually thinking about the shit you're saying, like putting more than five seconds of thought into it. Like, I can I could literally copy what their videos are now. Imagine a white character that's changed into a a white male character changed into a black woman. Woke, 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 identity politics. Hollywood keeps doing this. Get woke, go broke. Uh, they don't know anything about the business industry. I do. I'm some dude on the internet. I know more than Hollywood. Um, I know it's identity politics, it's tokenization, blah, blah, blah. That's all they do, man. That it doesn't get much more low effort than that, right? Like, it's repetitive. 
it's like comfort food for you guys. Like you go back to it because it's like this, this couch, this chair that just feels so good. You can't get rid of it. It's got holes in it, it's ripped up, but you can't let it go. That's why you keep going back to it. It's this white fragility comfort food, man. You gotta break away from it. It's not good for you. If it's so low effort, why aren't you doing it then? This is the same crap that everybody spews that, that are jealous of YouTubers who do this type of content and then they always say the same thing. Oh, it's so low effort. It's so low effort. And because it is. If everyone is saying it except for the people that you're listening to, have some self-awareness. It's cultish behavior. If everybody else, you keep saying everybody, if everybody else is saying that this is low effort shit, who's wrong? A wide net of people who are telling you that make videos for a living, some people do it as a hobby, are saying this is low effort, what they're doing is shit. Is it, are they wrong? Or is it like the, the five or six, seven, eight people that you listen to, they're the right ones. They're the ones that are right. Man, they know it's low effort and you don't want to admit it, which is why you're saying, if it's low effort, why don't you do it? I clearly just explained to you why, like, I'm not a piece of shit. That's why I don't do it. I don't need to sell my soul or my morals or my ethics to make money on a fucking website. Like, I don't have to do that. And I feel bad for anybody that does. Because some of these people are probably talented in other ways. But it's much easier to get on YouTube, go to Twitter or something like this, watch a video, and just talk shit all day about diversity and inclusion and all of these things that are so simple and don't affect any of these people. Again, I want to point this out. The people that are complaining about this, their day-to-day -day would not change if everything kept going the way it was. They're, they're actual, because they're complaining that the stuff they loved before was better, which still exists. The stuff that's coming out now, they don't like. If that did not change, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter to them. If, if there were laws passed in this country that, like, that prevented gay people from being in movies and TV shows, how would that affect them negatively? Think about that for a second. How would that affect them as individuals negatively? It wouldn't. And what happens if gay people continue to be in movies and TV shows, which they will be? How does that affect them negatively? It doesn't. But gay people would be affected by that. Either way, gay people will either get more representation and people to look up to and people to be inspired by in media, or they don't see them anymore and then we deal with depression and issues with mental health and things like that and dealing with like more uh, oppression and, and shit within their own communities, not just in media. So there is a risk here going down this path with these channels that have an opinion. There's a bigger thing at stake here that you're just not even like paying attention to, man. You guys are not even paying attention to it because you have no, you will lose nothing. You will lose nothing regardless of which way it goes do it then if it's solo effort you should be able to do it no problem five minutes open up a tweet a tweet uh tell people that mainstream media is lying to them uh mm -hmm. make the person yeah it's called showing facts and evidence to the claims that they're making they're able but they don't if they're doing a five minute four or five minute video they're not showing anything man they're not showing anything you cannot accurately explain anything like that in a four or five minute video you can't. You, you can't. You're leaving out very important information. To present this to prove what they are saying to be true. It's not lying. Give me evidence. Right now, in this video, if you had evidence of that, you would show me that evidence. You would show that to me. You would say, by the way, let me show you that they present facts and evidence for this. You would have a window opened up and you'd say, look, mainstream media, blah, 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 whatever. No, you're not. You're just regurgitating what they told you. you you're, this is like a game of telephone. You're like fifth, sixth, seventh down the line, man. You're not even on the call. You're listening on a conference call at this point, dude. Like, some that's tweeting look like they don't know what they're talking about. Call them weirdos. Uh, double down on that. Repeat that same thing three or four. 
Yes, most people on Twitter are weirdos. Just like the weirdos who tried to cancel Silvervale for playing Hogwarts Legacy. All I have no opinion. I don't know who that person is. I have no opinion on that. Sounds like he's got an issue with it. Oh, fucking weirdos. They say weirdo shit. They do weirdo shit. They're weirdos. So, that there encapsulates the issue. This guy, along with a lot of other minions who are part of the cults of these channels, they are so deeply ingrained in this that they will eat the crumbs of the people that they're following. I don't know how we break them out of this, how we help them to see that there's a path to free thought. I don't know. Maybe they're okay in the ignorance of all of it. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of at this point. Four times in the video. And Twitter is not real life. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, then why were you just mad about somebody quote unquote getting canceled on Twitter? If Twitter's not real life, then why are you like, I don't, I don't understand much what the video is. You know, once again, I'm going to reiterate, if it's so simple to do, then why aren't you doing it then? And I'm going to reiterate because I'm not a piece of shit. I don't get it. I'm not trying to sell my soul. But podcast, mine was one of them. I saw it and I was like, what is this? So I went in and looked and YouTube has a new feature where they're, they're creating a, their own podcast service, probably an RSS feed at some point to turn into like an official podcast. Uh, but YouTube slash podcast. And I went to that page and it was a new page for me. I'd never been there before. So it was basically just kind of aggregating what it thought fell into my bubble of interest, uh, which is all, I mean, every website does this now. Um, yeah. But I noticed yeah. at the top of that list, and keep in mind, a lot of these channels I've clicked on and been like, don't recommend because I don't want to see anything from them. Um, a lot of that, like, you don't want to see anything from them yet. Here you are comment co making commentary on them. Right. So let me reverse that to you. If you don't want to see us, why are you here commenting on our content? If, if it's so easy to just not comment on it, then you should be, you should close this page down and never have uploaded this video. And I would say the same thing to the people you support. Quartering, Jeremy, Eric July. If it's so easy to just not watch something and not comment on it, then why is our whole channel built around that? You know, bigotry, porn, anti-fandom stuff was in. That's none, those channels that you're referring to are none of those things. They are. They absolutely are. That cycle. And I'm like, now I what? specifically said now I didn't what? want to see that stuff, but it's still showing mm -hmm. up there uh, because they're still trying to push that out. The YouTube algorithm, even with brand new stuff, makes it super easy for people to stumble into these things and then go down the rabbit hole because all it takes mm -hmm. is clicking on a couple of those videos mm -hmm. and YouTube is like, oh, this is what you want. By the way, I want to point out before he responds here, that is the well-known algorithm of youtube and a lot of sites TikTok, instagram engagement equals more viewing so every time you click on something whether you love it or you don't love it the website thinks that you love it even a downvote doesn't help because they know that even though you disliked it you're likely to click on it again because they know that outrage stuff works so this is a problem with youtube it's not just with these channels it's not just these channels my argument here, because I'm sure he's not going to understand it, sorry, is before the podcast page came out, I had gone through and like, don't show me these channels. Then I went to the page and it did show me the channels, showing that there's an issue with YouTube either in the blocking system or in the way the podcast page was designed to get to aggregate content out to people. That was my point. I don't know why this was clipped because um, I I think this is a problem that everyone should be concerned about. It's not just about these channels, but my statement about the rabbit hole is absolutely 100% accurate. If, if you watch one or two of these videos, you get inundated with these videos, full stop. You haven't established what you want yet because you're, you're, you're just watching it. And so what? it just pushes it out to you. And it seems like it's just one of those things where it's just, it's everywhere on YouTube. It's literally everywhere. And it, because it resonates with people that's why it's everywhere no no it's that's not why people see these outrage channels 
and I'm going to pay attention here. You might want to get a notepad out, a pen, so you can take notes here. YouTube is in the business of making money. YouTube is not in the business of protecting people's sovereignty or um, helping people in day-to-day -day life or any of those things. YouTube is in the business of making money. So what happens is if they go, hey, this person who just signed up for YouTube is clicking on a lot of comic book superhero stuff, let's suggest some of these other videos that they may like. And then you click on that and then YouTube's like, oh, they're spending a lot of time on those videos, either becoming a minion like yourself and suckling at the teat or someone like me who has watched a few of them and gone, this isn't for me. This is fucking shit. It's awful. I don't want to see it again. Either way, the money has already been made. So YouTube doesn't care. You know what else is prevalent on YouTube? You know what else is prevalent? A lot of good content. A lot of people that are out here talking about the stuff that they love. Right? That's good too. That's very good. And the problem is that the cycle of negativity on YouTube, these channels here, get funneled together because they're all talking about singular things that they all decide on. If one person makes a negative Brie Larson video, all other six channels make negative Brie Larson videos. Whereas people that love Transformers may make a I love Transformer video on Thursday, but then somebody that loves Godzilla makes a I love Godzilla video on Thursday. And then somebody who likes Power Rangers makes that video on Thursday. So the algorithm's like trying to figure out where they go. But when it comes to these anti-channels, these outrage, these bigotry porn channels, they're all making the same content so it all gets funneled easily. That's why they all stream together. That's why they all hang out together. They've all been accustomed to how they game the algorithm. And something I've said, I don't know if it was on this stream or not, is I give them credit for understanding how to game the algorithm. If there's anything that that particular group of people have done that I think they do really well, it's gaming YouTube's algorithm. So the blame isn't just on the people that are consuming that content. Cause I think ultimately that's the biggest problem. The, another part of that blame is the way YouTube aggregates content and funnels content to people. Until both of those things are addressed, neither one of those sides can fix the problem. YouTube can't fix it with aggregating and the fans can't, if, if you get people that don't want to listen and, and don't want to change their mind about hate content, then the, the funneling doesn't matter either. So it's, it's a two-sided problem um, because the creators are not going to give up the money. They're not going to stop doing this for the money. So it's, that's just not an option for them. Okay, we're gonna do this very last clip. Well, we're not gonna do that one. I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about Dane's stuff. He's already covered that plenty of, plenty of, plenty of times. This is an old video, it's already like, it's a while ago. Anyway, bottom line is, and I'm gonna wrap this up here. It's a really long video, I do apologize. But my bottom line here is that guys like this, and the reason why I wanted to respond to this when the chat sent it over to me, the chat's probably like, where are you at? Why are you not responding to us? I've been, been doing this video. Um, guys like this that make this kind of content, it, it makes me a little bit sad because clearly he's very passionate about Eric July and, and the quartering. And he's, he's taken that energy, that passion that he has, and he's been sort of swept up into this cult of personality with these people. Because they're very charming. I think a lot of these guys, for the most part, have a lot of swag, a lot of charm on camera. And so I think a lot of these these fans admire that, right? They, they think of that as something that they aspire to. And that's great. I think everybody should, you know, want to better themselves in one way or another. But, the, but at the end of the day, the fact that the language used in this video, the weirdos, the checkboxes, the forced diversity, all of that is stuff that came from these channels. This guy did not come up with this on his own. This is not something that he just thought of and said, hey, I'm going to make this video. Matter of fact, this video was him basically going on the defense for all of these channels. People that don't care about him. He even said in this video, it's about making money. If it's so easy, why not do it? That's very telling because I went to his channel and his channel to me, from what I could briefly see on it, Looks like he is also trying to follow in the footsteps of these other channels. He wants to he wants to be part of that that uh, success. So that's another dangerous thing. These channels have 
created this success story for a lot of people to follow. And, and it's like, and it's almost like they, they have Teflon, right? Because if you don't say anything about them, if people like me don't speak up about them, then they go unchecked, right? There's no, there's no other voice in the void. It's literally just these people doing this, right? But if we do talk about them, we bring attention to them and thus taking a chance on funneling more people through to this algorithm. So it's a no-win situation for us. And this guy seems to think it's so easy to quote unquote make money by doing what they're doing. But the reality is there's thousands of channels doing all kinds of things on YouTube. Some of them are trying to copy other people's success and it never works. If somebody wants to be successful in this circle with the fandom menace, they have to either attach themselves to it or somehow piggyback on this. Meaning if the fandom menace makes a video about Brie Larson, then channels like this have to make videos about Brie Larson and just hope that someone clicks on their content. And at that point, it's a game of telephone. They, they've already watched all these other people's videos and they're making a video just regurgitating what these other channels have already done. So it's, it's a cycle, man. It's a cycle, you guys. And I'm going to continue to speak up about it. I think it's really important to be vocal. We, we can no longer just ignore this stuff. I don't think the, the ignoring it is an option anymore. I honestly feel like at this point we have to say stuff. We have to sort of fight back against it. Um, but the truth is that other than the stuff on YouTube and, you know, a few Twitter accounts here and there, it seems like they're reaching some sort of cap on the amount of people that are, that are following them. And maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that one day I don't have to have a channel like this, that everything can just be on one channel, but I don't want to use my platform, uh, you know, on, of my main content to funnel people towards this stuff. So I'd rather people just find this channel and, uh, you know, if they want to subscribe to my main channel, they can, I don't know. Anyway, don't attack this guy. I don't, I don't have anything personal against him. I don't know him. Um, but he made the, the mistake of trying to dissect me when he didn't even know my name which is a big problem with these fucking channels. It's a big problem with these channels. All right, I'm out. Love you guys.